We're already familiar with working with exponential form. Anytime we see something in exponential form, like right here, we say the base number raised to the exponent equals the answer. So if I were to label these pieces, the B is the base, the X is the exponent, and the A stands for the answer. When we read this out loud, we would say b to the x equals a. That's how you would read that format. Or if you wanted to read this problem out loud, you would say 5 to the second power equals 25. So we're pretty familiar with that. What we're going to do now is kind of rearrange everything and put all of that information, the b, the x, and the a, into logarithmic form. So a logarithm means a log with base b of the answer equals the exponent. So we're just rearranging it so instead of the answer being what you get when you raise a number to the exponent, in this case our answer will be the exponent. So whenever you think of logs, you're always trying to figure out what's the exponent. That's what logs will equal. So if you look at the rearranged format for logs, you would read it like this. Log base b of a equals x. Or if we read this sentence, the log base b of the answer equals the exponent. So let's fill in those letters. Log base b of a equals x. Log base b of the answer equals the exponent. So I've taken this example from right up here and I just rearranged it into log form. So log base 5 of 25 equals 2. If we were to rearrange that, I'm going to make this little swoopy arrow, and I'll do this all the time. 5 to the second power equals 25. So let's try that in the first example. We'll go from exponential form to logarithmic form. So log base, the base is 2 of the answer of 64 equals the exponent, which is 6. How do we check that? 2 to the 6th power equals 64. You could type it in your calculator if you don't believe me. 2 to the 6th equals 64, which is the original problem we started with. Let's try it again. Log of the base, which is 4, so log base 4, of the answer 4 equals the exponent, which is 1. Another time, log base 5, because the base is 5, of the answer, which is 1, equals the exponent, which is 0. In other words, 5 to the 0 equals 1. Log base 5 of the answer equals the exponent, negative 2. So 5 to the negative second power is 0 0.04. Last one, log base 3 of the answer equals the exponent. This would be one where you would be trying to figure out what x equals. What power do you raise 3 to so it equals 81? We'll look at problems like that in a little bit. All right, now we'll go back the other way. So if you draw the little swoopy arrow, it'll be really easy to um, go backwards, or you're welcome to label each piece. You could label the base is B, the 100 is the answer, and the 2 is the exponent. In other words, 10 to the second power equals 100. 10 to the second power equals 100. So let's kind of follow the rule for that. 7, the base is 7, to the exponent of 2 equals 49. Some people like to write it so that the answer is first. So maybe you say log of base 8, so the base is 8, of the answer, so then you say the answer is 0.125, 
equals the exponent, which is negative 1. Some people like to write it in that order. I kind of prefer to do it with a little arrow. 5 to the first equals 5. I think it's just faster that way, but that's just me. Last one, 12 to the 0 equals 1. 12 to the 0 equals 1. You're always welcome to check those on your calculator. We have some special properties of logs. Anytime you see log base b of the same answer like that, the answer will always, always, always be 1. Here's why. If you rewrite it in exponential form, it'd be b to the first equals b. Well, of course it does. Let's try any other example. Log base, I don't know, 11 of 11. That equals 1. Why? Because 11 to the first power equals 11. We could try it with any number. The next special property is anytime you see a log where the answer is 1 right there. Anytime you see that, the log of 1, your answer will be 0. Why is that? Because if we rewrite it, we'll have b to the 0 equals 1. And we learned earlier this year that anything to the 0 power equals 1. So let's try it with any number. Log base 13 of 1. Guess what? The answer is going to be 0. Because if you were to rearrange it, it would say 13 to the 0, of course, equals 1. So those are just two properties. Sometimes I like to think when I see the same base and answer, I just think, oh, cross them out, it's going to equal 1. And anytime I see log of 1, I just think that it's going to equal 0. Sometimes you'll see that there's no base. Sometimes you'll see a log and then a number, but then no base. Like look at example A right here. See how it just says log of 1,000? And this one right here, B, has log base 4. If they don't write a base, then it's called the common log, and it's so common that we just skip over writing it, and you assume the base is 10. So when we do A, we're going to assume the base is 10. So it will be log base 10 of 1,000. We're trying to figure out what these equal. We're trying to evaluate them. So for this problem, we're going to say, what does this log equal? It equals x. So we need to figure out what x is. Well, let's go ahead and rewrite it in exponential form and see if we can figure it out. It's going to be 10 to the x equals 1,000. So we have to figure out what x equals. Is 10 to the first 1,000? No. Is 10 to the second 1,000? No. That's 100. Is 10 to the third 1,000? 10 carat 3? Yes. So our answer here is x equals 3. Let's try b. We do have a base. We're just trying to figure out what the exponent is. So I'll rewrite it. 4 to the x equals 1 fourth. Now this time we're trying to make the number smaller, not bigger. If you started doing 4 to the first, 4 to the second, 4 to the third to see what x equals, your numbers would keep getting bigger and bigger. So if you're trying to find a fraction or a decimal, don't try positive numbers for your exponents. The number will get bigger. Try negative numbers for your exponents. Okay, so let's go ahead and try 4 to the negative 1. So 4 caret negative 1. When you do that, you'll get 0.25, which sure enough matches up with 1 fourth. So our answer here is negative 1. Let's try C. It looks like they didn't write a base here, so that means that that little tiny base right there is 10. We're trying to figure out 10 to what exponent equals 0 0.00001. Now I just said, if you're trying to figure out a fraction or a decimal, try negative numbers for your exponents. So you could do 10 to the negative 1, 
10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 3. Keep trying them. By the time you get to 10 to the negative 5th, you will have the same thing as 0 0.00001. All right, last problem. We have the base 25. We're trying to figure out what it equals. So let's rewrite it. 25 to what power equals 0 0.04? We're trying to get it to equal decimal, so let's try negative exponents. So let's try 25 to the negative first. When you do that, it comes out to 0.04, and you're good. How could you figure that out without a calculator? Some of you might be thinking, couldn't we just use the rules of negative exponents? Yes, 25 to the negative first. Anytime you have a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal and you flip it over. So that would be 1 over 25 to the first, which is the same thing as 0.04. If that's the way you think about it, that's fine too. But there are a lot of ones with decimals on your homework, so good luck practicing.